Yes, thank you so, so, so much, uh, everyone who has organized, attended, participated, um, presented. It's been another amazing Nest with Sedora. I know we, I've heard it at least a hundred times during this, but we would have loved to be in person with you all, but we appreciate the participation virtually nonetheless. Um, so yes, thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and being a part of this, this great event. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. Oh, wait, are we, uh, got it. am I in trouble? I got excited and started <laughs> advancing no. No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, so since I covered this in the opening, I'll cover it again. Um, just a reminder that we have a code of conduct. Uh, everyone that I saw was very well behaved. Um, and that's what we love from about our community. You know, the friends foundation is really important. Um, but just remember that as you go forth and do awesome things for over the next year, code of conduct. Is Ben's audio um, sad? Yeah, it's Ben. I thought it was my problem earlier, but it's definitely no. Ben. You've been turned into a robot. Oh no, we lost Ben. But yeah, I'll just riff on what he was saying, which is uh, this conference is so great because everybody is so amazing, and just the chat and like the hanging out in the museum and all the social times, like uh, it. It makes it an online event that doesn't just feel like more meetings, and that's uh, thanks to all of you and all the energy you bring. So that's amazing. Yes. Oh, Ben brought the slides. So when he left, he took the slides. They'll come back. I left the schedule slide on there. Um, if you're a speaker and you have your slides available, please add them to that wiki page um, so people can go back and look later. Hopefully, it. Once the videos are up on our YouTube channel, I don't know if anybody's going to go through and like individually link all 50 something talks, but there will at least be a link to the playlist there. Um, so it's just a good place to, you know. I'll add something there. Um, I'm planning to drop a reminder for speakers to share their link, to share like a link to their, to their slide deck on the flock ticket, the flock repo ticket. So there will be a reminder there as well, but we would love to be able to share your slide decks um, with your presentation. Um, and don't forget to claim your badge if you haven't already, although I saw that maybe the link has expired. Um, so if you haven't claimed it and you need it, um, let somebody know and we will get that taken care of for you. Let's see. I bet I could get it real quick here. Um, so while Murray's doing that, I... go ahead, Matthew. Sure. Oh, I was I was going to answer the hat question, but I see that. Sure. It's, yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, um, this is you know the red hat you get when you start at red hat as a red hatter. That's nice. Up here, some of I don't know who all was responsible for this, but some of you here, uh, when I got a promotion with a kind of funny title of distinguished engineer they thought that the fedora wasn't quite classy enough so decided that i needed this so this is some um, community gift to me that i really appreciate and uh because i'm not really like a steampunk gentleman sort of person i don't normally wear it out it just lives in its place of honor on my shelf there but i there was some scheming earlier to put together an entire steampunk outfit to match for me. So I don't know. I wouldn't say no. I, I want to see that. Um, With coattails and all. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's like pain. senior distinguished engineer has to have that. That's the... I thought distinguished engineer was the, was the peak. There's another. Uh, th there is a senior of it, yeah. Um, and then actually above that, there's a thing called Red Hat Fellow, um, which is, uh, I, we do not currently have any, I don't believe, um, and although I should actually know the answer definitively to that before saying, uh, but it, that's... Uh, <laughs> Interesting. Well, today I learned something. Yeah. Um, speaking of learning things, the Apple folks would like to learn uh, from you as a uh, Apple user or maintainer. So please take that survey for them. 
similarly, the docs team would like to learn things about how you interact with uh, the Fedora docs uh, to help inform some of the changes we're trying to make to make the doc site more usable. So please take that survey as well. Surveys for everyone. And so as a reminder, we talked about that we are looking for a new F cake. Um, that process is in the works, but you know we do need somebody to try and take over the wonderful job that we have done. <laughs> Create a new job in their own uh, in their own way. I think is going to be an say. image, right? No, I, we should change uh, the title slightly with every F cake just to make it clear that we don't expect one make F -cake it, to be like another. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I actually asked Marie when she started if she wanted to shed that baggage, but it's kind of a tradition at this point too. So, yeah. F cake is fun. I don't know. I yeah. didn't. I didn't dislike it. Yeah. And there is cake, so that's. <laughs> important but also there was the important uh thank you so much marie for everything you have done in that role um we should have a special like round of applause for you at some point here i don't know this is i i, I know you're I going think, anywhere but i think uh, that yeah there's we got it there slide. okay i got, got ahead it was there <laughs> yeah. at the bottom it was that text i was i was keying off of that but um, yeah um i i do want to take a moment um I don't think people realize the amount of effort that Marie has put into Nest and all of the events um, that she's done over the last three years. And, um, you know, Matthew and I are up, are on stage here with her, but it's like 80% Marie. Um, yeah. And this is her last Nest, hopefully, because she'll be, you know, taking a new role. Um, so I just wanted, you know, everyone to just take a moment and just thank her for all the awesome work that she has done for our community and will continue to do. Uh, until the day she dies, hopefully. I mean, I think it's a long time from now. That's me. It's weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, I have yeah. like a mini a mini speech, which is, um, I guess, being being the Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator has just changed my life, my career, um, and I've connected with so many people across the world in ways that I had never really imagined um, and face challenges and I would like to think had victories over them and definitely haven't been perfect in every single way um, but I really just appreciate the people in Fedora so very much really have changed who I am as a person helped me grow and I'm so glad that I had the chance to support all of you. Don't be so, so so much <laughs> cheering in the, the the animations. Wow. Okay, sorry for taking things out of order. We can wait. Wait, go back two more slides. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So at the beginning of this, we were like, we're gonna hit a thousand k. You can go to the next slide, though registrations and we were so darn so so very darn close i actually just refreshed the page and it's 992 right now um <laughs> i don't know if someone took my <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> no it's 993 um but i am just gonna call it you know pretty yeah. that's that's less than one percent right that's yeah. a very very um solid effort and thank you all for you know, tweeting and sharing it in your social media and sharing it in your networks. And um, the really cool part is we had a 76% turnout and I was just like, I was curious. So as I was preparing for this, I took a look and most industry events are showing a 50% turnout. So we are way above and beyond that 50% turnout. Also, I was looking at like um, how long people stay in events and it's usually like three hours or, you know, like 30 to 40 minutes a session. Um, but we have like nine hours and 45 minutes um, is the average amount of time spent um, at Nest, which is awesome. <laughs> and we beat last year's, which was nine hours and 20 minutes. So that's pretty cool. And any 
uh, mathematicians, statisticians who would like to quibble about how we're calculating averages, you can do that as a talk for the next event, I think. <laughs> we also had a higher peak attendance of 284 um, attendees all at one time. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, and that was above last yeah. year's of 250. It, yeah, it's amazing to see that like these going up after three years of doing this because I, I continue to be tired of virtual events in general, and my enthusiasm for them has gone, you know, after the first three months went down pretty low. But um, I'm I, this one's this one still uh, is energizing for me, and I'm glad it is for other people as well. Why does that not show graph? Or I had the slide there. Maybe you, I don't know, I could see it on my side, but maybe. Invisible, protected data. <laughs> there we go. There it is. So just some fun, fun other stuff. Um, the top areas by attendees. Um, last year, your state of Fedora talk had 249 visitors. So we beat that by 60 some odd people um, showed up for that. And top areas by chat messages, pub quiz again. Knew we could do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, chat messages by area, that's not as interesting. Um, and I guess <laughs> the expo booth and for Lenovo and DOS was the most popular. It's not really That's an expo that. booth kind of conference, although we continue to support to appreciate our sponsors. They're not here for the expo booth, really, right? That's... Um, I'm, I don't want to go through all of the polls or um, even <laughs> all the ones on the screen, but uh, you know, I think maybe this would be a good com blog post at, or several at some points talking about some of them. Um, I did like the fact that Hopin allows one option polls, which is kind of cool. Um, but I uh, I included a few that were kind of interesting to me, um, including our sartorial choices. Um, almost half of us, or a little over half of us, would never wear PJs to a conference. Um, the rest of us might. That's fine. What if it's PJs um, I, day? I mean, and it's a Saturday too, so like, you know, I'm not wearing a polo shirt today. I'm kind of slumming. So, um, I thought the "Would you rather have infinite coffee or infinite chocolate?" closeness was close. I really worry about people who want infinite buttons. <laughs> I don't even like having one around. Um, but sure, you knock yourself out. Um, I, I wrote that poll by the way. <laughs> I'm in favor uh, of a larger but still finite number. I think that's what we. That... Finite Ben Cottons is okay. <laughs> um, I did want to just highlight the Fedora social channel because um, a lot of people apparently hadn't heard of it or don't like fun. Um, we do, you know, that's open all the time, but we do have weekly uh, social hours that. I think um, I don't very attend very often, but when I do, I really enjoy them. So you should definitely do that. For um, a while, we had a um, no talking about Fedora rule at the social hour in order to make it um, continue to be focused on the social aspects. And we often talk about all wide ranging topics, but sometimes it gets Fedora, um, you know, tech we focused talk a lot or whatever, depending on food. Talk a lot about food. <laughs> there is, yeah, <laughs> uh, but we've been doing it for two years now, I guess. It's, uh, Since I don't know, forever, really forever times. But yeah. uh, it's on it's on Thursdays, and we alternate later and earlier in the day, from my perspective, um, to accommodate people at different time zones around the world. So show up. Um, also, just wanted to oh, put in the, a plug the for... chat room is there all the time, but the Fedora social hour is twice a week. Sorry, make that clear. Once a week. What? Once a week? Yeah. See, this is two time. What is it even? And if you want to know when next week is, you can read Friday's Fedora facts on the community blog because it's listed in there along with all kinds of other useful information. Um, the one person who says they read it and doesn't have what they need 
let me know because I'd like to make it more useful. Um, and the 52 people who say we who didn't know we had a community blog, that's sort of the semi-official way that we um, publish, you know, at least at the council, um, all of the, you know, project level announcement -y kind of things like policy changes and stuff like that from the council will go there. So it's a really good place to follow. There's typically only a few posts a week, so it's not a, a heavy inundation. And in one small thunk at the um, problem of all of our information being decentralized and everywhere, it is uh, mirrored to uh, the discussion.fedoraproject.org site in the announcements category, and also all the comments go there, so it's not split. Um, so you can also follow it on Discourse, and therefore by email it, with your Discourse notifications, or I think you can also subscribe on the com blog directly if you want different ways to get the information. So. It, that's a pretty useful thing to follow if you want to be kind of more involved. It's the inward facing blog rather than the Fedora magazine, which is going to outward user facing uh, information. And 34.7% uh, would like to be more involved, as well as 24% uh, who are not involved but would like to be. So this could, you know, show some opportunities where you could get involved. Um, and the other thing I just threw up here with, I thought was interesting was the uh, geographical one. Um, one person who is probably lying, but maybe not, um, joined us from Antarctica. Uh, but there's definitely a heavy Europe and North America uh, presence, which I don't know how much of that is time zone and how much of that is like an accurate representation of our community. Um, but it would be cool to, you know, see more people. Um, we do have their geographies. They're there is a Fedora project contributor who I think lives in Alaska now, but um, and has not been active for a while. He's, yeah, keeps keeps saying on Twitter he'll he'll come back. So we need to poke him a little bit. But who did actually do stuff from Antarctica at the research station down there? So Antarctica, it could be another person. Um, if if it is or you, or a penguin, or a penguin could be a penguin, but could actually be legit. Um, so. Definitely yes. to, oh, Matthew's going to go ahead. Go for it. Oh, sponsors, thank you. Thank you, Red Hat. Um, we really appreciate, you know, uh, everything. They provide Hopin for us here, which is, uh, you know, that's it's a nice platform that um, makes it possible for us to do this with as few people as we do, really. Um, and, you know, a lot of other stuff for Fedora. And gold sponsors, Alma Linux, one of the other downstreams that rebuilds from the uh, the CentOS sources, the RHEL sources, to make um, a RHEL-like distribution. And they are trying to do that in a community manner. Uh, and it's nice to see them around and kind of interacting in the Fedora community. And of course, Lenovo makes the laptop that you cannot see, but that I am using to talk to you now came with Fedora Linux pre-installed. It's awesome. Um, if you haven't seen that session, um, find that in the recording. Uh, Mark is really uh, involved in the Fedora community, and it's a, uh, awesome to see. OpenSUSE, one of our you know nearby sibling distributions in some ways that has a, a lot in common with the way Fedora works and a lot of the technology we use. And so um, I like to see the collaboration we have back and forth and some overlap with OpenSUSE you know, contributors and Fedora contributors even. Datto, who sponsored one of the Hatch events, um, that that's uh, great. GitLab, they're giving us GitLab access for the docs hosting and a bunch of other things. And, you know, that's, um, we're, we're having, I'm having a conversation with them about making more things open source on GitLab coming up sometime soon, too. So I don't know, hopefully we can, we can push there. Uh, that would be a kind of exciting. And I cannot see the other one because it's behind my camera. Oh, my goodness. It's DOS keyboard. That's awesome. Wait, where did my keycap go? I here. One lonely key that has the Fedora logo on it. And I need to get a keyboard that this can actually fit on. I, in the meantime, I do have this little Arduino device. It's not plugged in right now, but I can put the key on here and then have it do something, um, which 
it's running circuit python so i could pretty much make it do anything but i don't have an, a particularly useful idea so if anybody wants to suggest what a fedora button should do um you know shouldn't be cotton <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also need to get some other like not white keycaps to match it here, but this is what I had lying around. So, uh, it's a, uh, they also uh, this is from Adafruit, and they have a one key version of this as well, but it was out of stock, so I went with four. So I don't know, maybe I, I'll look and see if the one key version is back in stock again. I don't know. I don't need a key to ping myself on Matrix. That is not useful. I... <laughs> Open discussion .fpo, though. That seems on brand for you. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, and there's so many more sponsors. Uh, yeah, so uh, KDE and GNOME desktop environments that are you know, some of the key things we integrate into our desktop um, additions, products, offerings, spins, uh, our technology, and we have like to have good relationships with them. So it's nice to see the back and forth there. Opensource.com, which is a Red Hat um, blog that talks about open source and open culture and is awesome. And Tux Digital, which is was Destination Linux Network, and they are a partner with us on the Fedora Linux or the Fedora podcast. Thank you all. Swag time. Exciting. This might be me. Yes. Yeah, so if you have not signed up yet for your Nest with Fedora swag pack, please do. Um, we have 500 packs made, but there is more swag beyond that. I have a, a bundle. I have some Nest swag packs from last year. I have some t-shirts. So if you signed up for swag, we are going to get you some. Um, just depends on you know when you signed up for it. But there's a really fun surprise item in the swag pack featuring our new mascot cooler. So super excited for people to get those and um, have fun putting them up around your house. That's what I'm going to say for now. <laughs> nice. Um, do we know how many uh, of the 500 have been claimed already? If Vipul is around, he could tell us. Uh, and he did. Okay, so. All right, so there's still a chance to sign up if you haven't gotten one of those swag packs. Um, also just want to call out um, Hello Tux. They offer t-shirts, hoodies, polos with the Fedora logo, and there's a promo code to get a discount on uh, Fedora swag there. And also the Cool Stuff Store. Yes, we know you have to log in. We agree that's not ideal. Um, but you can log in there and take a look at the Fedora collection. And there's a variety of items you can purchase, including a t-shirt, some other things. Um, but since you're all getting Nest swag already, you can just yeah. skip that for now. Um, uh, but it'll be available for a while longer. I don't know if we are not going to ask that a fast have a fast login for it because Fedora account system login because uh, this system is apparently going away in favor of an entirely different one. So this is Red Hat's own um, branded merchandise store that we were hoping to simplify things for ourselves by taking advantage of. And it turns out to um, have not. So we'll see. For the new one, there's going to be no login. That's my understanding. But I'm figuring out what that's going to look like right now it might go on to the next F cake. Not sure, but um, we're, we're talking about what the new solution will be. Cool. We're almost out of the out of time. For these, we managed to go twenty five minutes with like legit stuff and not just uh, you know <laughs> making random jokes and being awkward. Um, but yeah, thanks too. again. We can do that too. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> oh, yep. There's a good comment here that says that the QR codes in the slides are not very inclusive for people who are not able to just scan the slide because they may have, uh, you may be blind or have other issues with that. So yes, that's a good point. Um, we have put these links at various places pinned in the event thing. Um, but we can make them available somewhere else as well. They also, I think they all went by in the chat. Um, that's a good point. There, 
almost historically go ahead Marie. i was just gonna say that they're in the reception page um for the event and that there's going to be a post event email that'll have the swag link it'll have a link to the replay section um but we're absolutely open to that suggestion and i think we can definitely just have the links at the ready next time and and be dropping them in the chat yeah, historically we've also added them to the wiki page i don't know if we did that this year but some definitely something we can do is add it to the schedule wiki because um, we do want to make it super easy for people to click on the link however it is that they click <laughs> yeah uh so yeah. are we done i think so i guess we're done i really could use like yeah. a you know a, a meal with everybody and a drink and a hangout yeah. you know Did well maybe after a nap but then we should so. also say help thank you to all the other helpers um here uh, yes. people doing the polls and moderating our yes. rope and isa and justin and i'm not sure who all else um vipple and isa Vipple, did a yes ton of thank work. you uh, isa did a ton of work coordination with our sponsors and she did a bunch of the social media work um so thanks a huge thank you to isa um for doing that awesome work for us and making the event an even greater success for sure all right and of course thank you everybody for attending and speaking and everything else we'll see you you know actually just basically where we are here already not in hop in come on over to chat photoproject.org or discussion and we can keep talking and the museum is like always running right is that so True. the museum, yes, it is always running. Um, but right now we have, you know, like a paid making sure it works for more than 15 people kind of thing. But if you wanted to use, if anyone in the community wanted to use the Fedora Museum for an event, for hanging out, totally can do that. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Talk to you soon, like next week online. <laughs>